morning to you, good evening to us. Hi, my name is Jay, and I will be demoing to you the Amazon Workspaces. So today I'm just gonna show you a day in the life of a cloud administrator as Joe. So what we will do, we are performing three tasks. Okay, the first one is that um, there is a new full-time employee that needs to be created a uh, workspace user, so we will create one. The second one is that uh, there is an employee who resigned, uh, and we will already remove her access for uh, AWS workspaces. And number three, there is a request for a VLC and VSDC application for one employee for, his, for him or her to use. Okay, so now here I am using the Workspaces app or the Workspaces, and uh, being the cloud administrator, I will log in to my instance. So let me just key in the username and password. Okay, so we're starting in. Now I'd like to point out that all the tasks that I just mentioned will be performed in AWS workspace. Okay, so as you can see from the display, uh, this is AWS workspaces. We can resize it uh, to fill the screen and just give it a few seconds. Okay, and notice that the, uh, the icon for Windows and time does not change. So it actually follows the format of your screen or um, the medium that you're using. And I'd like to also mention that uh, Workspaces supports full high definition on four monitors and for uh, Ultra HD 4K up to two monitors. Now, just a quick note, communication is encrypted via PCOIP, only pixel display, keyboard and mouse clicks, microphone, and speaker data are transmitted. And company files are not in worker laptops. So if a device is stolen, and uh, is stolen, no company files will be compromised. So let's go to the first task. Now we are to create a new workspace user. And in the essence of time, I've already pre-created uh, Jill as the user for uh, the new user or the new employee. So let's get started. So here I'm going to the AWS Management Console. This is what will be used by the Cloud Administrator to manage workspaces. And then just, just click on workspaces here. Okay, now we have here our uh, current users. As you can see, there is no one named Jill. So we will launch workspaces. Okay, now being, uh, we can select a which uh, a group Jill will be uh, a member of. So for this one, she will be part of the full-time employee and then click next step. And then in this uh, directory, we'll show all users. Okay, then just select the user that you've created in Active Directory. In this case, it's Jill, add selected, and then next step. Okay, now that we're here, uh, we can choose uh, what the compute power is and memory that we will be assigning to the particular user. So in this case, I'll just choose the standard with Windows 10. Then next step. And then this one, I'd just like to point out that uh, for the running mode, uh, we always give the uh, choose the auto stop so that if the user of the workspace has been idle for an hour, it will automatically log out. Now for manage tags, this is mainly used for billing purposes so that we can identify or we can associate it to the user. So in this case, that's uh, the key would be team and the value will be full-time employee. After that, click next step. Okay, if everything looks good, we can already launch our workspaces. There you go. Okay, let me just go to full screen so that everybody would appreciate using this as the medium. Okay, so once this is done, you will see a notification that it will take about 20 minutes for the new user, for Jill, to use or, or 
her workspace to be active. Once this is done, you can send an invite user so that she will receive her login details. Okay, now the next uh, uh, task of uh, Joe is to actually uh, delete or terminate the workspace for Ruth, who has recently resigned. So here in the same uh, workspace console, we will search for her name, and in this case, it is Ruth. If in case you there are more than six users, you can click, uh, you can type the name here for the workspace ID or the name. So here we can see that Ruth is available, and what we will do is select her, her username, and then we can do remove workspaces. And now it will give you a prompt saying that this will be removed and it will, you know, the user will no longer be available to access her remover, uh, her workspaces. So once it is confirmed, you can click remove workspaces. Okay, now once this is done, you will be seeing that it will take a certain time, like five minutes, to fully remove the user from the workspaces. So that is task number two. Now for task number three, uh, there is a request for Bob to use specific applications like VLC or VSDC. Now, in a real-world scenario, there are different departments who should have access to different applications only and not for a general use. So in this case, we have Bob here requesting for uh, additional applications. So in the same console, we will go to the Applications Manager, click Applications. And here are the applications available. Now, I just want to point out that uh, for this purpose, I'm using the Workspace Application Manager. And alternatively, you can use SECM or Group Policy Installation. Okay, so for this one, I'll be using Workspace as Application Manager. So uh, the request was for these two applications. So select both and then click on Actions and assign application to users. Now, I will have to select a directory. Uh, Bob belongs to the full-time employee, so I will click on this one. And then I will search for user. Username is Bob. Okay, there we go. And we can just select the name of the person, Bob. Click here, and then we go to Next. Okay, now there are two options. You can have them uh, install automatically or required, or it can be optional for the employee or the workspace user. In this case, I will put both as required. Okay, once everything is clear, click review. And then we can confirm and assign. Okay, in this case, we would like to check if Bob is indeed uh, using or has already received the application. So we will just click there and, oh, sorry, let me just let me quit this one. Okay, now within Amazon Workspaces, I'll do a little inception wherein I'll access Bob from inside Amazon Workspaces. Okay, so let's type username Bob and his password and then sign in okay here we go it's launching okay now this is the instance or amazon workspace instance of bob now how do we check if the application has been uh installed so one key giveaway is that vlc is already here uh, it's already um, it was already created a shortcut for him, and we can also check with the Amazon Workspace Application Manager. As you can see here, there are two that have already been installed. Okay, so there. This is the day in the life of uh, a workspace user uh, who uh, who happens to be Joe, the administrator, and he has fulfilled all three tasks. So that's it for my uh, workspace demo. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Jay. Greatly appreciated. Up next uh, are Zscaler solutions. And here to talk to you about Zscaler is Gabriel. Hey, yeah. So I'm, got, I'm going to give, uh, I can start with 
um, presenting my use case for this demo. So basically, let's say I'm a security administrator and I need to configure access policies for two people in two different departments. So the first person would be Alice, who is a marketing manager, and she's part of the media department. So she's going to need access to social media sites like Facebook and YouTube, but not access to backend resources like uh, the databases and the servers. The second person would be Bob, who is a DB admin for the dev team, and he's going to be the one who needs access to the backend resources, but not uh, but is not going to need access to the social media sites for his productivity. So to do that, we're going to need to make two policies, one in ZIA and one in ZPA. The one in ZIA we're going to be using, uh, we're going to be uh, creating a policy to control access to Facebook by blocking everyone except the media team. And the other one in ZPA is to allow the dev team access to the dev environment. So to do that, we can go to the admin portal. So we can start with ZIA. This is the admin portal, which is hosted by Zscaler. So we can sign in. So here we can see the a lot of features that DIA can uh, that DIA has. So aside from the the simple features of URL filtering, um, DIA also allows you to monitor network traffic and um, have uh, and block credential malwares. It also lets you sandbox and quarantine files, depending on your rules. And it also has data loss prevention functionality. So, but for this demo, we're going to be using the URL and cloud app filtering feature. So to create the rule, to create the policy to block Facebook, we can go here to the cloud app control policy and create a social networking rule. So we can name it something like block FB. And you can set it to all departments and to everyone so that it's a blanket rule to block the website. That's it. So you can also select the application that you want to block. So you can set it to everything, but we are going to be specific to Facebook. So we can now that we have a blanket rule, we can create a secondary rule with a higher priority to exempt the social media team. So, like this. so here we can see the criteria for which we can select, uh, uh, we can control the, the access to Facebook. So we can select um, which users you want to block, uh, which groups you want to block, or which department. So uh, for ZIA and ZPA, to work, you have to integrate them with an IDP. So um, this can be something like Okta or ADFS, but for this demo, we're using ADFS. And Bob and Alice have their department account, uh, department attributes set to dev and media. So since we're going to allow the media team, just have to select that. Uh, it also allows you to select um, from what location they can access it, uh, what time interval they can access it, and it also allows you to um, limit the amount of data that website can use and for how long that person can use that site. So now we have that, just save. And we now have the policy for uh, Facebook. So next we can go to, we can create the policy for to allow the dev team access to their dev environment. We can go to the Zscaler private access admin portal, which is also another website hosted by Zscaler. Here, uh, you can quickly see uh, the applications that I've already predefined that users can access. Um, we're specifically going to be allowing Bob access to an SQL server. And here I have it defined to allow access to the whole subnet where the servers are deployed. But this can also be something like uh, as specific as a server ID or maybe a domain name. You also have to specify the kinds of port, the port ranges um, the application can be accessed from. So to create that policy, we just have to go here to the access policy and create a rule. So we can make it this. And here we have the criteria for ZPA. So we can be as specific as um, blocking, uh, allowing access to a specific app or to a group of apps. 
So since we want to be specific, we can just select to the SQL server. We can limit we limit it to the department attribute of Bob. And here we can see there are two ways of accessing ZPA and the app. So the first is the Zscaler app, and this is the preferred way because it's much simpler. And the second is the web browser, uh, is ZBA browser access. So this is a use case for when uh, a third party, maybe a third party contractor doesn't have the ability to install software on their workstation. They can log in via the browser and they'll be able to use the application normally for as long as that, the, that session exists. You can also uh, limit access according to the network they are on. But, since, but for the sake of simplicity, we'll be sticking with these. So now we have those two policies configured. We can, I can show you the perspective of what Alice would see. So here I have a workspace instance with Zscaler installed. And one of the cool things about the Zscaler app is you can install it in strict enforcement mode, which means that if the user isn't logged in to Zscaler, they won't be able to access the internet. So we can see here that I wasn't logged in. And if I try to access Google or Facebook, I won't be able to. But if I log in, so here you can see I am now logged in the uh, to ZDA and ZIA. And I should now be able to access Google. And since we're Alice, we have access to, we should be able to access Facebook. Um, so I also have a pre-configured rule which blocks illegal websites such as gambling and other material. So we won't be able to access that. And she also won't be able to access the SQL server, which you see here. So here I have another workspace uh, instance, this time with Bob logged in. And since I'm Bob, I should be able to access the internet, like Google. But if I try to go to Facebook, I refresh, I won't be able to access it. Uh, what I will be able to access though is the database. And we can see that by logging in here. And there you go, I'm logged in. So another feature of ZPA and DIA is it allows you to track user activity. So we can see here in the ZPA admin portal, if you go to the dashboard, you'll see a lot of information on the current users and the health of various applications and connectors. So we, if you go into one of the users, you'll be able to see what apps uh, they connected to, how long it took, where they connected from, and uh, a bunch of other information about the network. For ZIA, same thing. You can go to the dashboard, and you can see a lot. You have a very broad overview of what you can, of what uh, activity is going on within the network. So you can also see here uh, what use what the user has browsed to. See that I'm a, I, I browsed to a bunch of sites before this. Uh, you can also uh, generate reports using this. Um, they has predefined ones, but you can create custom ones. So there's user browsing history and other information like that. Other reports based on whatever graphic is going on. So that's it for Zscaler, and, uh, ZIA and ZPA. There's a lot more functionality than what I can show here in the demo, but I'll be handing off this time for AppStream. All right, thank you very much. All right, so up next is Nika with AppStream 2.0. So hello, I will be presenting on AppStream. So as mentioned by Jared a while ago, so it lets the user access applications through a browser. So for this, this demo's use case, Joe, the cloud administrator, has prepared a limited functionality device like a hardened notepad or Chromebook for Bob, the user, which only has a browser application and is restricted to only allow access to a certain application set via a browser. All right, so 
Um, in accessing the AppStream session, note that AppStream supports Active Directory integration, but manual creation of users is also supported if there is no Active Directory. So for this demo, I will only be showing an example on how it works with EADFS integration. So a link is generated um, by the administrator and is, will be accessed by the user. Okay, so let us now try to access the session as Bob, the user. Um, as you can see my screen, I will sign, as, sign in as Bob. All right, so while connecting, um, the applications that we pre-installed in this session are WC3270, Zscaler, and Internet Explorer. So let's assume Bob is a mainframe user. Let us first try to connect using the WC3270 terminal application as soon as this connects. All right, just a few moments. Okay, as you can see, we can now, we will copy and paste the connect command. And you, as we can see, um, we can now successfully connect to a browser to with a browser to the mainframe and can now log in using our credentials. So with AppStream, Bob did not need to install the application himself in his own personal computer and just accomplish this, the task using a browser. So now for the security, uh, AppStream allows Joe to restrict applications that Bob can access. So it is important to note that Bob or any user could not install additional applications such as games to the AppStream session. But there is another security issue. So what if Bob is given access to a browser inside the AppStream session? So for network level restrictions such as browsing, we will demo how Joe can use the scaler. So as long as Joe, um, the user has not yet logged in, the Zscaler application, we can see that we could not connect to any of the sites, Google or Facebook. But as soon as we input the credentials of Bob, I will just input the credentials of Bob. All right, and we sign in. As long as this authenticates successfully, yeah, so it's connecting. So since we configured that Bob would not be able to access Facebook, we can see that we could still not access Facebook, but we configured Bob to access Google. So as we can see, we can access Google. All right, one thing, another thing that I want to show you is that Bob could not log out without the password that can only be accessed by the administrator, which is Joe. Before I end, um, another thing is that once Bob disconnects from his AppStream session, the credentials for Zscaler get erased, thus requiring him to log in again. So I hope you got an idea on how AppStream can be a useful tool in distributing application securely. That's all for the AppStream demo. Thank you.